Five sin, please have mercy, make me one of your men, cause my people lost, try to take them where you found them, it's the way you found me, but this earth is hell surround us, Satan's head is heavy. Shalom, shalom, shabbat shalom, shabbat shalom, welcome to the Yahweh and Yeshua Speak Television Show, we are on part two of riding on the high places of the earth. Let's start out in Isaiah 58 chapter. Riding on the high places of the earth. Isaiah 58 chapter. So the world has its way of riding on high places. Yeah. But there is no ride like Yahweh's ride on the high places of the earth. None. Isaiah 58. And we want to read verse 14, please. Hallelujah. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. All right. So it says, Then shalt thou delight thyself in Yahweh, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Yaakov thy Abba or father, for the mouth of Yahweh has spoken it. So it says after something happens, then Yahweh is going to cause us to ride on the high places yes. of the earth. So Yahweh causing us to ride on the high places of the earth is connected to our obedience. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And riding high only comes with obeying the weekly Sabbath commandment. Now, right, right, just like it is. In Isaiah 58, 14, it says the seven English words, and I will cause thee to ride. Those are one primitive Hebrew root word, rakab. That's R-A-K-A-B. Found at Blue Letter Bible number 7393. Yesenia's Hebrew Chaldee lexicon defines, and I will cause thee to ride, as to be carried, to ride as a horseman in a chariot, to cause to ride on horseback, to cause to ride in a chariot, to place on a vehicle, to fasten to a vehicle. So how does Yahweh make us ride on the high places of the earth? Let's read Isaiah 58, 14 again. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. All right, he said, Then shalt thou delight thyself in Yahweh, and after that, I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth. So first, we delight ourselves yes, in yes, Yahweh. That's number one. Yep. So the four English words, then shalt thou delight, again, our one primitive Hebrew root word, anag. That's A-N-A-G. <clears throat> Found at Blue Letter Bible number 6026. Yesenia's Hebrew Chaldee lexicon defines then shalt thou delight as living softly and delicately to delight oneself to be glad in anything yes. as the scripture said i was glad when they said unto me let's go to the yes. temple let's go yes, to the house are. of yahweh so we delight ourselves in yahweh yes, we do. by doing seven things every weekly shabbat let's read isaiah 58 and 13. Right. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Shabbat a delight, yes. the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shalt 
honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thy own pleasure, nor speaking thy own words. Right? And so you'll notice uh, Sister Katan is reading from another Bible, so now she's going through the phase where she's going to learn what the Lord is. Praise what to my God. God. Is. Like we all dad That's do. Because that other Bible is, yeah. It says, we delight ourselves in Yahweh by doing seven things every weekly Shabbat. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 58, 13 says, if thou turn away thy foot from the Shabbat, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Shabbat a delight, yes, it is. the holy of Yahweh, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. That's right. So there are seven things we do to delight ourselves in Yahweh. They all involve obeying him on the weekly Shabbat. Okay, okay. Number one, we turn away our foot from the Sabbath from doing our pleasure mm -hmm. on his holy day. Number two, we call the Shabbat a delight. Yes. Number three, we call the Shabbat the Holy of Yahweh. Okay. Number four, we call the Shabbat honorable. Number five, we honor Yahweh by not doing our own ways. Number six, we honor Yahweh by not finding our own pleasure. Uh-huh. Number seven, we honor Yahweh by not speaking our own words. Okay. All right. Let's read Isaiah 58, 13 again. Then we're going to look at each one of these seven things that we do every Shabbat, every weekly Shabbat. Praise to mighty Yahweh. Right. It's the seventh day. Yes, Isaiah 58, 13. If thou turn away thy foot from the Shabbat, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Shabbat a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shalt honor him, not doing thy own ways, nor finding thy own pleasure, nor speaking thy own words. All right, so the first thing, turning away our foot from the Shabbat, is bringing back to mind what we used to do. Okay on the Shabbat before we came to Yahweh. So number one, Yahweh said, we turn away our foot for, from or on the Shabbat from doing our pleasure right, right, right. on Yahweh's holy day. The two English words from doing are one primitive Hebrew root word, asa. That's A-S-A-H, found at Blue Letter Bible number 6213. Yesenia's Hebrew Chalde lexicon defines from doing as to labor, to work about anything, to work upon anything, to produce it from oneself by labor, to manufacture, to fabricate, to create, to make anything, to work. Go to Genesis, the first chapter. So he said, turn away from yep, doing. Yep, yep. We're looking turn at, away. what is this from doing? He said, don't do it on the, the weekly Shabbat. All right. Whatever you would have done those six days, uh -huh. he said, you turn away from doing this. All right, well, so the answer no, tell like it is. And the first thing he said, turn away from doing your pleasure. I remember my, right. my ish, he loved to bowl. He didn't bowl growing up, but once he grew up and then he, <laughs> yeah. he learned how to bowl, he just loved to bowl. And they would have these leagues where, of course, they would travel, and then they would bowl on the Shabbat. And so he was a good bowler, and people would always ask him, well, you know, how come you don't ever travel out of town? Well, he said, yeah, if y'all stop bowling on the Shabbat, <laughs> then I will. Right. As much as he loved that. So whatever I love, I love watching yeah. decorating shows and things like that. Right. I don't watch them on the Shabbat. Right. I don't record them. Right. If they come on on the Shabbat, so I can watch them later. And years ago, there was a um, discussion that a brother had because he really liked football. And I remember him and, and uh, my ish started talking, and uh, 
Mahesh found out he was uh, taping the shows on the sh on the Shabbat. Right, right. He wouldn't watch them on the Shabbat. Right. But after the Shabbat was over, he would watch them. And then uh, Mahesh started talking to him and said, "Brother, you're wrong. Right. You just have to miss those games. <laughs> right. You, that that's illegal." So I, and he finally he, he listened to him and uh, you know because his brother wanted to be right. Hallelujah. But this is from doing your own pleasure. Right, right, right. So let's look at uh, Genesis one and seven. So from Hallelujah. doing what is that? All right, it's something actively that I do. If I like uh -huh. to read People magazine or I like to read any type of magazines, y'all always said don't do that on the Shabbat. Right, right. Now I can read magazines that have some about the word in them. That's right. But I don't read people and, and all this other inquirer and all that. Right, right. No, I don't do that on the Shabbat. Right, right, right. Just like because it is. Because that's my pleasure. That's right. That's not one of my pleasures specifically, but yeah. I'm just saying, if right. it's something you like to do. Right, right. All right. Genesis 1 and verse 7. Hallelujah. And God made the ferment and divided the waters which were under the ferment from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. All right, it says, and Elohim made the sum of from doing. This is something he did. Right, right. Made the firmament, and he divided the Mayim or the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. All right, skip down to verse 31. Hallelujah. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the earth. Genesis 1 and 31. Oh, 31. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. All right, some of what he had made. Right, right. right. This Hebrew word, from doing. Turn away from doing. Right, right. And Elohim saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very tall or good. Very. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day or uh -huh. yom. Go to Genesis 2, and let's read verses 2 to 3. Hallelujah. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sacrifice sanctified san sanctify it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. All right. Yeah. It says, and on the seventh day, now you see he's talking about from doing, he's doing, he's right, doing. Right. Six days. This was our example. On the seventh Yamor day, Elohim ended his work from doing right, right. which he had made. And he rested on the seventh Yamor day from all this work which he had made. He didn't need to rest. He's showing us a pattern, yep. a heavenly pattern and yep. example for us to take. We need to rest. And Elohim Barak or blessed the seventh day or Yom and sanctified it. He set it apart. Yep, yep. Because he's saying the reason. Now he set it apart. And how we know he set it apart because that in it, he had rested. He had shalom from all his work, which he bara created and which he made, which he did. Right, right. All right. So seven things. There's seven things we do every week with Shabbat. And this is what causes us to ride on the high place of Hallelujah. earth. Hallelujah. First one is we turn away from doing our pleasures. Yep. Your pleasures may be different from mine. You got some people like to drink beer. Right, right. All right, don't drink no beer on the back. Shabbat. That's right, because that's your pleasure. Right. All right. Number two, we call the Shabbat a delight. Yes, it is. It's a delight. Now, people are calling it a burden, huh. but he said, if you want to ride on the high huh. place of the earth, if you want Yahweh to bring you up spiritually, right, right. you call the Shabbat a delight. The two English words, and call, are one primitive Hebrew root word, kara. That's Q-A-R-A, -A, found at Blue Letter Bible number 7121. Jacinius Hebrew County Lexicon 
defines and called as to cry out, to invite anyone to a meal, to many to call together, to name, to give a name, to recite, to read aloud. Didn't we just read in Genesis, the second chapter, that Yahweh called the seventh day something? Right, right, right. He called it. And so he not only called it, he set it aside. Uh -huh. But he said, now you are supposed to call the Shabbat a delight. That's right, the second right. thing you do every seven days. Let's go to Genesis 1 and 5. He gave it a name on purpose. Yep. Genesis 1 and 5. Pray. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So you see how this this Hebrew word kara call to cry uh -huh, out uh -huh. to give a name to, and Elohim kara, the or or the light yam or day, and the darkness he called lael or night, and the evening and the morning were the first yam he called it. Right, right. Let's get down Genesis one and ten. Great. And right. God called the dry land earth. And the gathering together of the waters called he sees, and God saw that it was good. All right, Elohim kara, or called the dry land Eric or earth, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and the gathering together of Hamayim or the waters he kara, or called seas. And Elohim saw that it was told or good. He's calling this stuff now. Let's go to Genesis, the fifth chapter. He said, now I gave it a name. Right, right. Now I invited you to a meal, a Shabbat meal. Now I want you to call it a delight. It is. Genesis 2. Hallelujah. Male and female create, created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day where they were created. Now he's referring back to Genesis, the first chapter, where he gave you the details of his creation. Right, right. In Genesis second chapter, he actually performed it as far as the man and the woman. Right, right. He said, male and female, Barah created he them, and Barak them, or blessed them, and Karah, or called their Shem, their name, Adam, in the day of Hayam when they were Barah, or created. But that's that primitive Hebrew word, Karah. But as far as us and the seven things we do every weekly Shabbat, we call the Shabbat of yep, delight. Yep, yep. All right, number three. He said, we call the Shabbat the holy of Yahweh. Yes, it is. I didn't set it up. Yes, it is. You didn't set it up. Right. And he started in Genesis, the second chapter, to make sure you can't say, oh, you know what? I, I didn't get to read that. Huh. It's in the first book of the Bible. But we call the Shabbat the Holy of Yahweh. Yes, it is. Because he said it's holy to yeah, him. Right. All right, go to Exodus 19 chapter. So the two English words, the holy, are one Hebrew word, kadosh, or kadash. Found at Blue Letter Bible number 6918. Justinius Hebrew Chaldee lexicon defines the holy as clean. Pure from defilement, yeah. idolatry, and other unclean and profane things. Right. As a singular, most holy is used of Yahweh. As plural, holy ones are used of obedient angels and saints. Okay. As worshipers of Elohim. Yes, we are. Especially the chosen Yisrael. Hallelujah. And you can tell who the saints are. Hallelujah. Because every week the Shabbat, you see them coming to the temple. Praise. Mighty. Exodus 19. And I'm going to read, uh, I want to read one verse. Verse 6. Please. Hallelujah. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. Yes. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. All right. So you're talking about these words. Kadash, yeah, yeah. right? The holy. Uh -huh. He said, "You shall be unto me a Malku, the kingdom of Kahena or priest, and a Kadash, Goi, a Kadash nation. These are the Dabarim, the words which you shall, Amar, speak unto Haban, the children of Israel. Yes. 
Remember, you do this every seventh day. Right, right. Call the Shabbat the holy of Yahweh. Yes, it is. You can't be calling yourself no holy people of Yahweh and you're not. I know, right? Every every Shabbat. You yeah, said right, right. that this is a sign that's on his people. Yep, yep. <clears throat> it's on their forehead. And it's in, in their, their heart and in their mind. Yep, yep. They understand they're a kingdom of priests. So what do the priests do every seventh day? They come and they assemble, like Yahweh said. Mm -hmm. Go to Exodus 29. The holy. Kadash. This is something doing. It's not just standing up and looking right. and calling yourself. Yeah, right, right, right. Tell it like it is so the answer. No. Holiness is a way of being yes, and doing. Yes, it is. It's action. Exodus 29. And let's read one verse. Verse 31. Hallelujah. And thou shalt take the ram of the con consideration and see it his flush in the holy place. Now here is Yahweh talking about a Kadash place. He uh -huh. said you should take the ram. This was during the time of uh, the animal sacrifice yeah, of the yeah. consecration and see the boil his flesh in the Kadash place. It's talking about the holy place in the temple. Right, right. All right, go to Leviticus, the 11th chapter. We call the Sabbath the holy of Yahweh. It is. And we're looking at some other things that he said is holy. Right, right. His people, the sacrificial system, a place in the temple, Leviticus 11. Give me one read verse 45. Hallelujah. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt yes. to be your God. Ye shall therefore be holy, for I am Hallelujah. Holy. All right, he says, For I am Yahweh that bringeth you out of the land of Mizraim or Egypt to be your Elohim or your mighty one. You shall therefore be Kadash, uh -huh. for I am Kadash. Yeah. So that's why number three of the seven things we do every week of Shabbat, we call the Shabbat the Holy of Yahweh. That's it. We understand that's a critical, crucial sign yeah. that books us up Praise with Yahweh, Yahweh that makes us holy. Hallelujah. Number four, we call the Sabbath honorable. Yes, it is. The most we, honorable We don't day. dishonor it. We don't disrespect it. It's honorable. Yeah, of the week. Go to Genesis, the 13th chapter. <clears throat> so the English word honorable is a primitive Hebrew root word, kabad. That's K-A-B-A-D or kabed. That's K-A-B-E-D found at Blue Letter Bible number 3513. Jacinius Hebrew Chaldee lexicon defines honorable as to be great, plentiful, to increase with honors, to be illustrious, yeah. to acquire glory. We're Hallelujah. acquiring glory by obeying Yahweh's weekly Shabbat, Yahweh's glory, to be abundant, to be rich, to multiply oneself, to be numerous, to be many. So we're multiplying ourselves. Yahweh said in this, his word that he will increase us more and more. That's yes, what's happening yes, yes. as we're obeying this weekly Shabbat Hallelujah. commandment. So we call the weekly Shabbat honorable. Genesis 13. And let's read verse 2, please. Hallelujah. And Abraham was very rich in cattle, in hmm. silver, and in gold. So it is honorable. It's talking about the very rich. Right, and Abraham right. was very rich. Yeah. In cattle, in silver, and in gold. Who gave it to him? Yahweh. Yahweh. He didn't go out working for it. Yahweh yeah, gave it to him. him. Yes. All right, Exodus the 14th chapter. So that very rich. Praise be to Yahweh. And the weekly Shabbat causes us to increase uh -huh. more and more. Uh -huh. To multiply ourselves. Praise. Exodus 14 and verse 4. Hallelujah. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them 
and I will be un yes. un upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. Huh. He said, and I will harden Pharaoh's pay your heart. Right, right. And he shall follow after them. I'm about our forefathers. Right, right. <clears throat> and I will be kabod, uh, kadosh, honored <clears throat> upon Pharaoh and upon kabod, rather, upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, that the misery may know that I am Yahweh. And they did so. Uh huh. He said, I'm going to get my my right. God, my, my kabed yep. upon Pharaoh. Leviticus, the 10th chapter. See, all we're going to get is honor. Yep. He said, every knee is going to bow. Yes, it son. is. Better bow now. Hey. He said, every knee is going to bow. And we bow now. And there you go. We got some good sense. Oh, we got to get it. Leviticus, the 10th chapter. And. Let's read verse 3, please. Hallelujah. Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is it that the Lord spoke, saying, I will be sacrificed, sanctified, sanctified in them that come, yes. not me. Mm -hmm. And before all the people, I will be glorified. Hallelujah. And Aaron held his <laughs> peace. All right, then mm -hmm. Moshe <coughs> said on Mar to Aaron, This is it that Yahweh spake, saying, I will be sanctified yep. in them that come nigh me. Yes. And before all I am or the people, I will be kabai or glorified. Yes. And Aaron held his peace. Yeah, because <laughs> Yahweh belongs all the glory. He said, yeah. Come on, he's going to get his glory. Yep. All right? That's right. So of the seven things that we do every week to Shabbat, number five is we honor Yahweh by not doing our own ways. Right, right. So there's some things that we like to do. Right, right. We put those off. Have to. On the weekly Shabbat. Why? We honor Yahweh. Yes. By not doing our own ways. Go to Genesis, the third chapter. So the three English words, thine own ways. Our one Hebrew word, Derek, that's D-E-R-E-K, <coughs> excuse me, found at Blue Letter Bible number 1870. Yesenia's Hebrew Chaldee lexicon defines thine own ways as the action of going, walking, journey, the way in which one takes very frequently a course of life. So I like to exercise. That's one of the journeys I take. That's one of the actions that I do. I right, don't right. do it on the weekly Shabbat. That's right. Why? Because I honor Yahweh by not doing my own ways. Hallelujah. If I want to shampoo my hair, if I want to get my, my hair done, if I had locks and uh -huh. I wanted to go and let them twist it up, I don't do it on the weekly Shabbat. Yahweh, right, right. I honor Yahweh by not doing my own right, way. Right, right, I can is. get up and comb my hair on the weekly Shabbat, and, but I don't. If I had a child, I could braid her hair on the Shabbat. Right, right. All right, but I don't get the pressing comb out and do that yeah, extra right. stuff. You understand on right, the Shabbat. Right. I don't shampoo my hair on the Shabbat. I don't condition my hair on the Shabbat. Why? Because that's part of doing my own ways. Okay. All right. Genesis 3 and verse 24, please. Hallelujah. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden uh, cherubim, cherubims. cherubims, and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. All right, so it says he drove out the man and placed at the east of the garden of Aden, cherubims, and a flaming sword was turned every way to keep or shamar the way of the tree of Kai. Uh -huh. So the tree of life has a way. Yeah, yeah. You got your own ways. There are things that you do. If your kitchen <coughs> is not clean before the Shabbat, 
you don't go home tonight and, and go bust the suds. Right, right, right. You don't go turn your, your dishwasher on if you got a dishwasher. Mm -hmm. You don't do that on the Shabbat. If you got a self-cleaning oven, you don't turn it on on the Shabbat and, and uh, let it clean itself. No. You got six days for that. Right. Because you honor Yahweh by not doing your own ways. Yeah, yeah. And you don't go home because you like hot food. <laughs> go home and heat up the food on your, your stove. Yeah, right, in right. In your stove. You don't do that on the weekly Shabbat. Tell Why? Because you're honoring Yahweh by not doing your own ways. You yeah, never right. die not having hot food. I know, right? One day, as a matter of fact, <clears throat> Yahweh has built it into your system where it is actually a rest and a refreshing. Your system can regenerate yes. itself by not eating hot food. Actually, raw food is better for you. You get more nutrients from it. So All Yahweh right, is right. helping Tell us like out it, so by know. letting us know Give your system a rest. Quit putting all this food that's been cooked to death in your system. <laughs> right, right. So we honor Yahweh by not doing our own ways. We're not going home to eat up any food. We're not going to put it in the microwave like some people tell you. Well, see, that's not really heating I it know, up. right? If it's not heating it up, <laughs> as soon as you finish cooking it, then put it in your mouth and see it on it burn. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Genesis 6. And let's read verse 12. Hallelujah. Uh, chapter 6? Yes, Genesis chapter 6 and verse 12. Praise mighty God. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. Yeah. Mm. All flesh had corrupted his way his upon way. the earth. All right, his so you way. see... The world got away. Yeah. I got away. You got away. Yeah. But then Yahweh got away. Right, right. He said, and Elohim looked upon high air to the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. Uh -huh. All corrupt. flesh had corrupted his way. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. They didn't honor Yahweh's way. That's what the majority of people do now. They don't honor Yahweh's way. Right, right. They honor their own ways. It was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Go to Genesis 24. Just want to see the difference. We honor Yahweh by not doing our own way. Right, 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 right. Yahweh has a way and you have a way. Uh-huh. But now you're supposed to put your way down. Uh, yeah, for one day. And then you, 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 you have Yahweh's ways throughout those six That's days right. pretty much. Every There's day. certain things that you have to do, but you, you're not going right. to do anything illegal. That's right. But on the Shabbat day, that's the seventh day. These are seven things that you do every, every weekly Shabbat. Hallelujah. All right, Genesis 24, and let's read verse 20. Praise the mighty Yah. And the man wondering at her held his peace to wit whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. All right, said it. And the man was wondering. At her, I believe this is when he uh, ran into uh, Rebecca at the well, uh, Abraham's uh, servant, and he was looking for uh, uh, Isha for uh, Yitzchak for Isaac. Yeah, yeah. And uh, she came and was water watering his camels and stuff. So yeah. he says the man was wondering at her, and held his shalom of peace, and he was wondering whether Yahweh had made his journey prosperous or right, not. Right, right, right. So again, this this word. Not doing our own ways is a journey that right. we're taking. Well, the only journey we're supposed to be taking every seventh day is to and from the Shabbat. All right. That's it. All right. And it don't mean taking a journey to YouTube and then you, <laughs> you think you're attending the, the weekly uh -huh. Shabbat. All right. So the sixth thing we do every seventh day is we honor Yahweh by not finding our own pleasure. I know, right? And if coming to the temple is not a pleasure uh, for you, uh, you better pray to Yahweh and find out how it can become a I pleasure know, right? to you. But we honor Him by not finding our own pleasure. Some people it's pleasurable for them to stay at home. I know, and right? We should buy, but that's backwards. Go to 1 Samuel 15. Or should I say that's like the world? Uh-huh. Say it like it is. Tell it like it is. 
1 Samuel, the 15th chapter. So the three English words, thine own pleasure. Uh -huh. Our one Hebrew word, kephets. That's C-H-E-P-H-E-T-S. Found that blue letter Bible number 2656. Jacinius Hebrew Chaldee lexicon defines thine own pleasure as what you delight in. Uh -huh. Your desire, your will, something that's precious so that you pursue after it. Right. And you have an affair with it. Uh -huh. You don't want to let it go. Uh -huh. 1 Samuel 15. And let's read uh, verse 22, please. Praise the mighty God. And Samuel said, said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice uh -huh. of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. Okay. All right, and Shimuel said, okay. As Yahweh has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying his voice. No, he's got more no. delight in obeying. Right, right. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. Yes, it is. And to hearken or listen than the fat of rams. Right, right. Go to 1 Kings, the fifth chapter. You honor Yahweh on the weekly Shabbat by not finding your own That's pleasure. That's right. 1 Kings, the fifth chapter. When you have some people, and when you mention the weekly Shabbat, and they just kind of lukewarm, and you mentioned something else. Oh, yeah. I know, right? Oh, yeah, I want to go. Oh, yeah. Hey, pleasure. Let, let, me, let me know when you're going. Right? right. That's what they're all about. Selfish. 1 Kings 5 and verse 8, please. Hallelujah. And Hiram sent to Solomon, saying, I have considered the things which thou sent Sent, sent us to me for, and I will do all thy desire concerning timber of cedar and concerning timber of fir. Yes. All right, so yes. here's Hiram, a Hamite, and he's uh, telling King Shlomo, Shlomo let him know, look, I'm building a right, temple right. And, and I need some cedar from you. So his desire, that was a yep. right desire. That's it. That was a right pleasure. Yes. He said to Shlomo, saying, I consider the things which you sent to me for, and I will do all your desire. Uh -huh. He had a desire to build the house of Yahweh and build yes. it right. Concerning timber of cedar and concerning timber of fir. Uh -huh. Let's go to Job, 22nd chapter. Job, the 22nd chapter. Praise to my God. It's a good question that uh, Job asked right here. And your people got it backwards. Job 22 and verse 3. Hallelujah. Is it any pleasure to the Almighty that thou art righteousness? Or is it gain to him that thou might make the ways perfect? All right, so he's asking the question. Is it any pleasure to how else should I that you are righteous? Uh-huh. Or is it gain to him that thou makest thy ways perfect? Huh. That you put aside your pleasure? Who, who's, who's gaining from this? We I are. am. We are. Right. But people have it backwards. They think they're doing Yahweh a favor. <laughs> Number seven. We honor Yahweh by not speaking our own words. That's it. And this is a big one for some people. I know, they just right? They love to talk about themselves. Not speaking our own words. And most people, they want to talk about themselves. Not only those six days, but they want to come and tell you about them, themselves right, on the right, Shabbat day. Right, right, right. That ain't if, world if, events. If I'm doing a, a, a testimony about myself, and it's not in the end glorifying Yahweh, huh. I'm speaking my own words. Right, right. Or if I'm trying to update you like I'm at a social club I know, and I'm right? coming to the temple, you got six days, call somebody on the phone and run that down so right, you can right. get that all out of your system. 
And I, I, Yahweh always made me like this, and I believe it was because um, uh, I was raised by my father. Um, his mother uh, was there, but uh, just having uh, a man in the house. Yeah. When I came to the truth, I always just kind of hung on the outskirts. I would try to sit with the women, and they wouldn't be talking about <laughs> nothing. I love my sister. Nothing but nothing. It like, look, I want to, I want to find out about the Bible. I want to hear about <laughs> what dress you got on or where you, you understand? <laughs> so Yahweh just made me like that. And so I'd end up like just kind of inching over to where the brothers were and listening to what they were talking about because they were talking about scripture. Right, right. So Yahweh has always put that in me. Praise the mighty God. But now I see it was part of honoring Yahweh by not speaking my own words. Yeah, yeah. So that's why it used to vex me. <laughs> so the three English words go to Genesis 11. The, the three English words, thine own words, uh -huh. are one Hebrew word, dabar, that's D-A-B-A-R, found that blue letter Bible number 1697. Jacinius Hebrew Chaldee lexicon defines thine own words as words, speech, discourse, a promise, something promised, a precept, a saying, a sentence of a wise man. The word of Yahweh, an oracle, a thing done, an affair of business, a cause, a reason. All right? So my own words will be all about me and Yahweh's not involved. Right, right. I'm just, or, or I'm going to engage in some type of topic or conversation that's irrelevant right, right. to what I'm supposed to be doing honoring Yahweh right. on the weekly Shabbat. All right, Genesis 11 and verse 1. Hallelujah. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. All right, so there's this one language and one speech. Uh -huh. It wasn't the speech of Yahweh. All right. This word, Hebrew word, Dabar. So we got six days to get all that other talking out. Mm -hmm. And then on the seventh day, we got six days to do this, Genesis 11, 1. On the seventh day, we want to talk about the word. We want to talk about what minister we've heard on TV or what revelation Yahweh gave us or what what uh, Yahweh is doing. Or so Hallelujah. that's what not speaking my own words right, right. will be about. Genesis 15 and verse 1. Praise the mighty God. Yeah. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield, and thy exceedingly great reward. Yes. All right, so after these things, the word of Yahweh came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, for uh -huh. I am thy shield, and thy exceeding great reward. Reward. Yes. So let's talk about the word of Yahweh. There's a right. difference between the word of Shaloma and the word of Yahweh. There's a difference between your word right, right. and the word of Yahweh. But on the weekly Shabbat, it's not supposed to be a difference. Uh -uh. Go to Genesis 18 and verse 14. Hallelujah. Is anything too hard for the Lord? No. At the time. Appointed, I will return unto thee accordingly to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. All right. Is anything too hard for Yahweh? No. Says, and this was a deal with uh, Sarah and uh, Abram, and he was telling uh, them that now was the time they were going to have a child. Right, right, right. And then uh, I think Sarah kind of laughed within uh -huh. herself. And he said, at the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of Kyle, life, and Sarah shall have a bond or a son. So he's just saying, look, speak my words, and I'm telling you what I told you. Right, it, was, right. it was 24, 25 years earlier, but right, he said, right. hey, and my word is timeless. Just yeah. say what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. It's going to come to pass. So let's go to uh, Jeremiah, the 17th chapter. So Israel obeying the weekly Sabbath commandment, going to Jeremiah 17 
is written with a pen of iron. Uh huh. With the point of a diamond. Okay. I ain't too. Yahweh said he, he 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 wrote them obeying the weekly Sabbath with a pen of iron with a point of uh -huh. a diamond. And diamond is the hardest thing. They have these drill bits that they make with diamond, diamond saw blades. That's right. And they remind me of Fred Flintstone. Mm -hmm. So that he's actually saying they got this like chisel thing, and this yep. is how Yahweh wrote the pen, yep. saying, "Look, the children of Israel are gonna obey the Shabbat, remember right. the Shabbat day." He wrote it, and he's not taking it back. That's right. He's not changing it. He's not making it flow. He's not making it do anything that man wants it Hallelujah. to do. Y'all right, bro. Tell it like it is. So they to make it easier on their flesh. Uh, Jeremiah sir. 17. Let's read verse 1. Hallelujah. The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron. Mm -hmm. And with the point of a diamond, wow. it is graven upon the table of their heart and upon the horns of your altars. All right, so think about Fred Flintstone and the heart. Yeah. He said, the hot to the sin of your hood is written with a pen of iron. Yeah. I know, right? Yeah. The point of a diamond. Yeah. It's graven upon the table of their mind. Uh -huh. yeah. And upon the horns of Yahweh's altars. Uh -huh. yeah. So the three English words with a pen are one Hebrew word, eight. That's E-T at Blue Letter Bible number 5842. Justinius Hebrew County Lexicon defines with a pen as a style that's made of iron. Which, which letters are engraved on a rock or metal. And I think about the, the Ten Commandments. Uh-huh. With that, had that pen of iron. Right, right. The two English words of iron are one Hebrew word, barzel, B-A-R-Z-E-L, at Blue Letter Bible number 1270. Justinius Hebrew Chalde lexicon defines of iron used to, to denote hardness and firmness, a hard rule and the obstinacy of the people. The three English words of a diamond are one Hebrew word, shamir, that's S-H-A-M-I-Y-R, found at Blue Letter Bible number 8068. Jacinius Hebrew Calvary Lexicon defines of a diamond as a sharp point, a thorn, a diamond so called for its cutting and perforating. Go to Exodus the 20th chapter. So Yahweh commanded us to remember yeah, yeah. the Shabbat day. I know, right? That's why Yahweh wrote that thing with a yeah. pen of iron and a, and a steel blade. Yep, yes, cast in stone. He commanded to remember the Shabbat uh -huh. day. Exodus 20, verse 8. Hallelujah. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now people like to quote this, but they uh, like to cut off the other part. <laughs> remember the Shabbat day. Well, we just saw the seven things when you remember the Shabbat day, what you do. Uh huh. And it said to keep it holy. That's one verse right there. Right. Remember the Shabbat day to keep it holy. The English word remember is the Hebrew primitive root word zakar. That's Z-A-K-A-R. Found at Blue Letter Bible number 2142. Decenius Hebrew Chalde Lexicon defines remember as to recollect, to bring to mind, uh -huh. to keep, to preserve, to shut up in memory, All right. to be mindful, to consider, to bear something in mind, to call back to memory, to mention, to make a memorial. Yeah. Of Jeremiah 17. Again. Mm -hmm. We're going to read verse 2. Hallelujah. So Yahweh said, remember. No, right. That day. Most of Israel remembers their high places. <laughs> In other words, they forget the Shabbat day. Jeremiah 17 and verse 2. Will it their children remember their altars and their groves? By the green trees upon the high hill. Uh -huh. See that the opposite. That's why I he know, wrote that with, with a, a, 
a pit of iron. <laughs> he said, while it's their children, remember their altars and their groves, their high places. I know, right? They made them a memorial. I know, Whatever right? they decided to do other than those seven things Yahweh said right, on right. the weekly Shabbat, they got a whole different system of what they do on right, the weekly right. Shabbat. And they entrenched in that. They're remembering their high places. Right, right. Nehemiah, the 13th chapter. Nehemiah or Nehemia. Nehemiah, the 13th chapter. In those days saw I in Judah some ready wine presses on the Shabbat uh -huh. and bringing in shells and sheaves and landing ashes as also wine grapes and figs and all manner of burdens which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And I testified against them in the day wherein they sowed their vittles. Vittles, yeah. So in those days saw so I Israel, all right, some trading wine presses on the Shabbat day, so they working, making wine. Right, right, right. Bringing in sheaves, so whatever it is they're lifting and toting, all right, yep. working, and loading up donkeys. Right, right with wine, grapes, and figs, and all manner of burdens, just like it's any other day, right. all right? Which they brought into Jerusalem on the Shabbat day. Uh -huh. Not doing the seven things Yahweh said. And here's Nehemiah saying, I testified against them. Right, right, right. In the day we're in, and they're selling stuff, buying and selling. So that's another thing that, right, right. that Yahweh does not allow us to do on the Shabbat day. You got six days to buy and sell. Uh-huh. If you need to sign a lease or if you need to, to do anything business-wise, that's not Yahweh's business, do it on those six days. Right, right. If you need to go to the doctor, make those appointments during those six days. You don't want to curse your health. Right, right. If you got a place and, uh, like I said, you're going to sign a lease or something, you're going to curse the place when you're going right. in to, to sign the lease on the ship. I, I know, when you're going to like it, it, you already cursed it. Huh. And then you you be wondering, well, how come, you know, people in my household, and you know, this ain't working that way. Huh. You, you curse the deal. You're the one that knows about the Shabbat. Right. Why are you going to curse it by going in? You understand? So, so Yahweh shows us these things. And yes. that's why the man said, I testified against them. Uh, right, and they're right. buying and selling stuff. There are people that try to come up in the temple and going to sell something up in the temple. Right. Oh, no, you don't be buying and selling. Not, not on the Shabbat. No, you got six days to do that. Alright, verse 16. There dealt men of Tyre also therein, which brought fish and all manner of ware, and sold on the Shabbat unto the children of Judah and in Jerusalem. Uh -huh. Keep going to 18. Then I contended with the nobles of Judah and said unto them, What evil thing is this that ye do? and profane the Sabbath day. Right. Mm. Did not your fathers tr mm. trust and did not our God bring all this evil upon us and upon this city? Ye, yet ye bring more wrath upon Israel by profaning the Shabbat. That's right. That's the biggest, that's right. that's the biggest thing, that's the main thing that got Yahweh's wrath to come on the children of Israel. Okay. Breaking the Shabbat. Said they dwelt men of Tyre, these are Hamites also. But Israel was doing all everything. Right. Just like right. the Shabbat was just a, another I know, right? day. 
They brought fish and all manner of dishes and sold on the Shabbat. Who buying it? The children of Israel. Yeah. And in Jerusalem. One thing about it, if you don't buy it, but you see these people set up these stores in the Shemite neighborhoods because they know they'll buy their stuff. Yeah. All right? They go over to a Gentile neighborhood, they'll go out of business. He <laughs> said, then here's Nehemiah. I contended, I confronted the nobles. I confronted Israel and said to them, what evil thing is this that you're doing? That you profane this about day. He said in 18, didn't your father do this? Right. And didn't Elohim bring all this evil upon us and upon this city for doing this same thing? Right, right. It's like, yet you bring bringing more wrath upon Israel by profaning the Shabbat. Then when you going to learn? How, right. how long is it going to take you to learn? Yahweh is not changing. Right. You wrote this thing with an iron pen and the uh, point of right. a diamond. And somebody going to get hurt in this thing and it's yeah. going to be the one that keeps thinking Yahweh's going to change. Huh. <clears throat> He's not. He's righteous coming out of the gate and he's bringing us up higher. Hallelujah. To ride on the high place of the earth. And the only way we can do it is to hook up and be obedient. That's the only do way. Do these seven things every weekly Shabbat. Hallelujah. And if you're not doing it, you're disconnected. You're out there, you're fumbling and Yahweh have mercy on your soul. Hallelujah. Because you, you stripped yourself of your protection. Yep. We didn't. But the people that are doing that strip themselves yep. of their protection. Verse 19. And it came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark before the Shabbat, I commanded that the gates should be shut and charged that they should not be opened till after the Shabbat. Hallelujah. And some of my servants said, I at the gates that there should no burden be brought in on the Shabbat day. Now you see how this leader is standing up and uh -huh. helping Yahweh's people? Why? Because they're comfortable buying, selling, yeah. doing whatever they want on the Shabbat. Uh -huh. But here's this man standing up and then he's got some, some people with him. Right, right. It came to pass that when the gates of Yerushalayim began to be dark before the Shabbat, he commanded, this is Nehemiah that the gate should be shut and commanded that they should not be open till after the Shabbat. Right, right. This is to stop these people from coming in, helping Yahweh's people. Uh -huh. And he said, some of his servants, he said at the gate, that there should be no burden brought in on the Shabbat day. All right, standing up for Yahweh. That's right, what right. we do. That's how we roll. All right, and, and, and whoever uh, don't understand, excuse me, standing up for Yahweh, Yahweh doesn't back down, so you don't have to back down know, either. Right. All right? In the end, when it does settle, huh. Yahweh, Yahshua, and you are going to be standing. Hallelujah. All right, verse 20. So the merchants and the sellers of all kind of ware lodged without Jerusalem once or twice. Huh. Sin. Please have mercy, make me one of your men Cause my people lost, try to take them where you found them It's the way you found me, but this earth is hell surrounded Satan's head is at 